Batman, the original movie, Saturday night at 8. Now, live from the studios of 1290 WHIO, your chance to take part in the Miami Valley's only midday radio talk forum. 1290 WHIO and Television 7 proudly present this simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show. Let me read a couple of quotes if you haven't uh, had your coffee yet or picked up the morning paper. No opinion here, just fact, folks. Um, a deal... You call this a deal? I'm putting that same emphasis in there. Giamatti threw the Manhattan telephone directory at Rose, stuck the dagger deep and twisted, gave Rose all he could give him, life. And if Giamatti could have made it more, he would have much more. And in actuality, Giamatti pushed Rose over the, or off the Carew Tower, over the Brent Spence Bridge, flatly against the wall, to the limit, to the extent of the law. That's what we call... A compromise, Hal McCoy. Yes, that's a compromise. That's a deal. Uh, what was that? What did What did Pete get out of it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he got a life suspension, but he called it a compromise and a deal. I, I fail to see where the compromise or the deal is in there. Hal McCoy, of course, uh, is sports writer. As it, if anybody needs to know, sports writer for uh, the Dayton Daily News. And of the thirty years that uh, the three decades that Pete Rose mentioned yesterday, that uh, he has been a part of Major League Baseball and baseball. Two decades of that are almost two decades. Uh, Hal McCoy has been a friend and writer uh, about Pete Rose. But as we just heard uh, on the radio portion of the show, that has been strained a bit, has it not? Well, naturally. Pushed to the limit. <laughs> yeah. Everything that's gone down this year during the season, uh, our relationship has gradually deteriorated, as, as I would expect, because of things I've had to write. And it's a sad situation, and, and it makes me sad because... Uh, Peter has been great with the media, he's been great with me, and to have this come down, to have a great career like this, tarnished like this, it's a very sad story. Um, let's talk about a few, and I said during the radio portion, uh, I don't know, maybe we should give a contest for an original question about Pete Rose at this point, and, and hopefully I'd win something, but I don't know if there is an original question or something, some way it hasn't been twisted and turned around. But uh, the cable value network that we've all heard about, and Pete was on there the, the night before the decision, when he knew what was coming down, and the night after, in fact last night he was on there again, uh, like nothing had happened. Well, right. How do you explain this to people out here? I mean, here's a man who was in tears almost in Cincinnati. Next uh, night, and uh, that same night and the night before, he was uh, hawking goods on CVN. Uh, I was watching that, and I found it tough to watch because it's very degrading to the man to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to see a lot of that. Pete has not much left uh, after baseball. He doesn't have anything. I think uh, this thing has been a tremendous drain on his finances, and I think uh, we're going to see him at these autograph shows on uh, things of this nature. Uh, uh, and He's going to be selling his story, I'm sure. Uh, it's going to be a, another sad story, another sad chapter. Is, Pete's it, life. is Japan beckoning Pete Rose? Uh, I'm sure Japan is a possibility, but uh, as we all know, baseball isn't Pete's only problem. The IRS is uh, waiting in the wings to have him answer uh, some pointed questions, and if the IRS comes down on him, I'm told he won't be able to leave the country, so there's a, another door shut. No pun intended, if you were a betting man, <laughs> would you bet that Pete Rose, A, will have a Reds uniform on again ever, B, will have a major league uniform on again ever? Uh, no and no. Uh, well, as long as Bart Giamatti is commissioner, I don't think you'll ever see Pete Rose in a baseball uniform again in the United States of America. And as long as Marge Schott is owner, I don't think you'll see him in a Reds uniform. I've heard speculation that uh, you know, Giamatti wanted to get the big fish. Baseball negotiations coming up and a possible, you know, possibility of a strike maybe next year. And uh, he wanted this win under his belt for maybe political reasons, and and if uh, maybe the the deal is, he said to Pete uh, or to uh, Reuben Katz, I may not be here for another year and a half, so I, you know, and I'm sure it wasn't spelled out like that, but maybe uh, undertones of that. Well, Peter Ubroff uh, threw this big fish in his lap before he left, dumped it on Giamatti. Uh, you know, that could be. Uh, that remains to be seen, how long Bart's going to be around, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an ongoing story forever and ever. The one thing that I've heard in all the interviews and all the regurgitation of, of this thing about Pete Rose is the sports writers seem to be fairly united in the fact that, hey, this is one issue, uh, you know, the, the, the 4,200 hits is another issue in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. uh, well, some are and some aren't. Yeah. I think it's going to cost him the uh, first, first ballot, ballot that he, that he might have had. He might have gotten 98, 99% of the votes. Now I talked to some of my uh, 
compatriots and some of them say that uh, this issue they won't vote on him on the, for him on the first ballot and you need 75 percent so it could be it could be very close and uh, back to your original question about Giamatti uh, uh, something that I uh, something that I wanted to uh, uh, bring up about it uh, I think Giamatti was making a statement I mean if I can get Pete Rose Mr. Baseball, I can get anybody out there, so you better all clean up your act. I think that's yeah. the message that comes through. And he means it. He means it. He showed that during his press conference yesterday. All right, we're going to show you how you can participate. Uh, lines are already quite busy. Hal McCoy, sports writer for the Dayton Daily News, more importantly, friend and writer of Pete Rose. Go to your phones right now and give us a call. You can, you can take part in the Mike Sinto Show by calling 457-1290. Or toll free anywhere in Ohio, 1 800 345 1290. Sports writer for the Dayton Daily News, Hal McCoy, is with us. Um, he is, uh, is and has been a friend of Pete Rose and also a writer about the Cincinnati Reds for almost two decades. We say hello to Nick from Dayton. Hi. Good morning, Mike, and how are you doing, Hal? Fine, Nick. How are you? All right. Uh, Pete says he uh, doesn't have a betting problem. <laughs> I think he's lying to us. What that, do you say? Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you're around Pete, as much as I'm around Pete, you know definitely he has a betting problem. And as uh, people who are expert in that field will tell you, uh, that's the first thing a compulsive gambler will tell you, that he does not have a problem. And until he admits to that problem, he can't get help. And I just wish that Pete would uh, admit to that problem. That was a, another incredulous thing that came out of that press conference. That he, when asked that question, if he would get help, he said, "No, I do not have a problem." Okay. Well, you know, even if even if he, uh, assuming he is telling the truth about not betting on baseball, I mean, he's still been hawking up to his ears to to bet on other things. Absolutely, everything. Okay. We say hello to uh, Ann from Dayton. Hi. Good morning. Hi there. I believe in what you just said that he does need help, but. The way that they have let baseball players, football players that's been on dope and things like that, they've sent them to a place to get well, then they bring them back. They just don't banish him, you know, out of the whole game. Well, they do get second and third chances. Uh, unfortunately, that uh, is in the players' agreement. The, the players' union has a very, very strong union, and that is something that has been negotiated. Uh, before that contract, the commissioner could throw... Uh, uh, dope users out of baseball, but they can't do that. Now they have to give them second and third chances. Okay, thanks for calling. I, I do want to mention, too, we have a 1290 WHIO telephone poll going. We've had over 2,000 calls, second highest telephone poll we have ever had on this, uh, and it's on the Pete Rose story. So far, 62% of you feel that uh, A. Bartlett Giamatti was too hard on Pete Rose. If you agree with that, we'll give you the final results just before 10 o'clock. If you agree that Bart Giamatti was too hard in his decision, dial 457-2200. Now, that's a local call in Dayton. Dial a 1 if you're outside the Dayton area, 457-2200 to agree with that. If you think the decision was fine, 457-3300. Let's go back to the phones, and uh, for Hal McCoy from the Dayton Daily News, we say hello to Scott from Dayton. Hi. Hi. Hi, Scott. How old are you, Scott? Eleven. Eleven. What do you think about this? Oh, this is a bunch of bulls. Why? <laughs> because, um, Pete, I don't see why you should take the um, blame when he didn't do it. <laughs> Is this part of the, I mean, you know, he's 11 years old, and, and uh, Pete's your idol, isn't he? Yeah. You love sports, don't you? Yeah, it's Johnny Bench. Okay, Johnny Bench and Pete Rose. That uh, And that's, and, that's I mean, it. that's two eras ago for him. Hey, thanks for calling, Scott. Is this uh, is this part of the problem, 11-year-olds who worship him? Well, sure, and it's and it's only natural because if you see Pete Rose, you see him on this cable view network, you uh, see him on interviews, you've seen film clips of, clips of him playing, you know his past. He's a very easy man to like. He's very, it's very difficult to dislike Pete Rose. Yeah. Uh, so, and you know, what he's accomplished in baseball, people love him, and I can understand what that. What do you say to somebody like Scott? You just try to uh, explain to him, you know, how life is, and when you're 11 and 12 years old, you don't understand a lot of things, and uh, the, the rule is there. Pete Rose saw that rule in the clubhouse hanging on the wall every day, and he chose to ignore it, and as Johnny Bench, his great friend and great teammate, said, I saw him on, saw him yesterday, said, you know, he has to pay the consequences. You know, Johnny, it took me a minute. I'm, I'm not, of course, I'm not real <laughs> clear on a lot of things, but it took me uh, a minute to figure out what Johnny was saying. But he was saying, okay, so he, uh, let's assume he did not bet against uh, the Reds. If he bet for them one night and didn't bet for them the next night, is that in a sense betting against them? Yeah. Uh 
I brought that point out a couple of months ago in a column because uh, a, a former player called me and said, here's something that I hadn't seen on the Pete Rose uh, deal at all. Uh, they say it's okay if he bet on the Reds as long as he didn't bet against them. But the bookies, the gamblers, they pick up on things like this and when Pete doesn't bet on the Reds, in a sense, he's betting against them because yeah. he's not willing to put his money up that night. And this gets out and the gamblers pick up on it. This is a tough one, Hal, because, <laughs> you know, Number one, because of Pete's reputation and, and, and the love for him in this area. Uh, number two, because of what he has done and the generations that have watched him. Uh, number three, because uh, I think we abhor the idea of what he might have done. We abhor his attitude in dealing with it. But we also, on the other side, I mean, we go back and forth here. Uh, you know, we've got uh, three people who uh, I doubt that we'd allow in our house, uh, if we were, even if we were still there, testifying against him to, uh, to nail him on this stuff. Well, that's true. Uh, you're not going to find uh, the kind of witnesses you need to corroborate this stuff. Uh, you know, like we yeah, said, church. In, in, yeah, right. In church or uh, any reputable place, because you know, if they're yeah. not if they're not involved, they're not going to be able to point the finger at Pete, which these people have done. But uh, there's a mistake he made. The people he associated with, he chose these people as friends. Uh, he said it goes back to his days on the street of since streets of Cincinnati. But uh, you know, he didn't have to participate in this stuff. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, our number is 457-1290, 1-800-345-1290. Hal McCoy, sports writer for the Dayton Daily News, with us in studio. You're listening to and watching the Mike Sinto Show, coming to you live from the studios of 1290 WHIO Radio and the facilities of Television 7. Hello, Rob from Huber Heights. How are you? I'm doing okay. You're on with Hal McCoy. Uh, I gotta believe that that guy is completely guilty, or why would he accept all these uh, lifetime banishment and everything if he didn't bet on baseball? That's the big question that was not answered yesterday that was asked four or five different ways. The question was avoided. If this is a compromise, if this is a deal, why do you accept lifetime banishment? Yeah. Uh, he, he would have the opportunity to face Bart Giamatti face-to-face -face and uh, declare his innocence, uh, show some proof, uh, and, the, and if he doesn't, he gets lifetime suspension, which is the same thing. They, they seem like they got too much evidence against him. Or this, uh, why wouldn't he, if he's constantly denying that he bet on baseball, why wouldn't he take his time and prove it? When Judge Holshue threw it back into federal court, I thank Rose's attorneys and explained to Pete, there it is, it's on the wall. You are going to have to face Bart Giamatti in the future. And they decided, you know, Pete has already spent great amounts of money on attorney fees. Stop it right now. And also on, on, on the Japan thing, those people are really uh, on the up and up, and I don't know if they would really accept uh, the, the, I don't know, the criminal aspect of Pete Rose on that. Aren't they really... Uh... I've talked to some players who have played in Japan, and they've expressed that same opinion, that they are honorable people, uh, they play the game honorably. Well, and, look at uh, the, the sex scandals in the government. Right. I mean, these guys resign if, they, if they're accused of anything. Right. I'm, uh, yeah. He's a great... Uh, you know, they love him in Japan, but uh, after this has happened, I don't know if, I, he could, if he could get a job over there. Thanks for calling. By the way, for those people who were tuning in, and we had mentioned earlier today that uh, we were going to have Denny McLean on during this segment, uh, live via satellite from Detroit. We are set up at his house. Uh, somewhere in between, uh, the satellite has not been kicked in, as is the case sometimes in this business, so we apologize. We're still hoping to get him. We've got about uh, 12 or 13 minutes left uh, on the program, so we're hoping to get Denny McLean for his insights on this, at least on a phone line, if nothing else. Uh, let's say hello to Billy from Dayton. Hi. Hi. Yes. Uh, great writer, Hal. Uh, we appreciate your column. Thank you. Uh, I think Pete Rose is guilty of all things they've accused him of. But I think with him... You don't think he is? I think he is. Okay. Uh, but I think gambling's a sickness, like drug abuse and anything else. He needs treatment. And until he realizes that he has a problem, you can't treat a problem. And... I just can't understand them banning him for a lifetime. Look at all the, the drug addicts and, and everything else that they bring back on and say, look what a great comeback they've made after what all they've been through. I think Pete Rose is in the same classification. He's sick. In my opinion, if Pete had admitted he had a problem back in February or even in March when this first started and he had asked Bart for help at that time, I think the man might have been compassionate. I think he has angered baseball. He has angered Bart Giamatti because of the stance he's taken, refusing to admit he has a problem, refusing to admit that he bet on baseball. Uh, so now they've taken the tough stance on the man. All right. Thanks so much for calling. I... What would you have done differently? We'll go back to the phones in a second. You're, uh, it's Commissioner Hal McCoy now. What, uh, 
What would you have done differently? How would you have handled it differently? I think I would have tried to uh, resolve the issue quickly. I think Bart was trying to be fair back in uh, back in the spring. He could have come down on Pete right away before it got into courts because he has that power. But he decided to do a thorough investigation. He decided to give Pete time, which he did. He extended uh, uh, the meeting for 30 days originally to give Pete time to come up with stuff to uh, defend himself. And to this day, there has not been one one shred of evidence that Pete did not do it. His attorneys have not uh, offered anything. Pete hasn't offered anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I'd have handled anything differently other than maybe uh, done it more quickly. Okay, I'm, I'm Pete Rose, um, and we, we, of course, speculated on this. Nothing original about this. You and mm -hmm. I talked about it. We've talked about it with everybody. We've heard it talked about. Uh, but I come to you, Commissioner McCoy, and I say, uh, okay, you know the investigation is going on. I know what you're going to find, and I've got a problem. You know, right. I've my, I've sold my uh, baseballs and my bats and my cars, and and uh, I've got a real problem. I want to get help. You know, don't kick me out of the sport. Help me. What would you do? Yeah, I mean, and what would Bar Giamatti and if Pete do? goes public with this, uh, it may still work. Yeah, it may still work. Absolutely. I, you got to ha you got to show some compassion for the man that he admits he has a problem. He wants help. He wants to get back in baseball. Uh, get some help, and then come back, and we'll see. Okay. We say hello to uh, Tim from Xenia. You're on the Mike Sinto Show on WHIL Radio and TV. Hi. How you doing? Fantastic. Thank you. That's great. Uh, I just really have a comment to make, and that, and all it is is that uh, Pete Rose, I've noticed and, and watched Pete Rose for the last, uh, let's say, as long as I can remember of my life of knowing baseball, maybe 12, 13 years. And the guy is... Uh, a great baseball player. He's done something that nobody else has been able to do, which is all the hits that he's accumulated. And, and in my opinion, all these things came out about him after, um, let's say, after he has made his record and mark on baseball. Now, the one thing I will say, uh, I believe Pete was smart in what he did because, see, to draw it out as much as he did, he to draw it out as far as it could have been drawn out, he could not have been able to manage the club. And and at the same time, his, too much of his private life would have come out. So overall, I think I think the reason that they did what they did is because I think in one year they'll let him back in because of who he is and what he's accomplished in baseball. And and and, and then at that time, maybe the gambling and I think all that thing, maybe he will get fixed on that. And and like I said, I think he'll be reinstated. I think his lawyers were smart, and I think he was smart. And why should he admit to something if he if he doesn't have to? It only makes sense. I, I don't think he'll be reinstated as long as Bart Giamatti is commissioner. And an incredible thing he said yesterday was that uh, he was going to give up betting on uh, team sports, but he intended to go back to the horse racing track. So uh, that that doesn't sound he good. He hasn't to shown me. a you know the, uh, the One least bit. bit of remorse. One bit. Um, and I think maybe that's what's embittering the American. I mean, and there's still people who are on his side. And, and if he showed a little remorse, right. you know, it's the Richard Nitz, uh, Nixon yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Uh, the thing of it is, if this had happened back in the time of, of Babe Ruth, uh, Pete Rose would still be managing and there'd be no problems at all. But uh, in these days, you're under the, the media spotlight, you're under the microscope. If you could just watch Pete between the lines, you have to love him. You sometimes can't see the forest for the trees. You know, I, the one good thing that's come out of all the recapping of Pete's careers and seeing him, I had totally forgotten Montreal. Uh, I, you know, I was thinking the Phillies. I mean, you think of right. Red, you know, him as a yeah. Red anyway, and I, I remembered Philly, and I forgot that he came back to us for Montreal. Right. Half a season. Traded for Tom Lawless. <laughs> good. Well, what a trivia, <laughs> trivia man. Uh, Pal McCoy is with us from the Dayton Daily News. You are listening to and watching the Mike Sento Show, coming to you live from the studios of 1290 WHIO Radio and the facilities of television. Okay, let's talk for a minute about uh, the future, and we'll go back, try to squeeze another phone call in if we can. Again, we apologize if you were tuning in to see Denny, uh, Denny McLean. Hopefully, we, we may have him on sometime next week uh, to give his insights. We had some problems uh, in between somewhere on the satellite feed from Detroit, but we thank him if he's listening to us there. Um, Hal, let's look ahead a little bit. Uh, mathematically, the Reds are not out of it. I mean, we haven't gotten to the magic number yet, but uh, uh, we're getting close to that period. What, uh, 12 or 13 back now, or is it more than that? 12. 12, okay. Um, it is theoretically possible that they could uh, hit a storm and, and uh, uh, San Francisco uh, fall apart. At the, I mean, it, and everybody else ahead of them. More realistically, third place, maybe second place. Would you agree? Oh, sure. What would that do for Tommy Helms? Do a Anything? Lot. Might get him a job next year mm -hmm. as manager of the Cincinnati Reds. Fourth uh, place won't cut it. Fourth uh, or fifth place. I don't. He has to show some improvement. Uh, the team has to perk up, uh, which uh, 
under him the last couple of uh, games in Chicago. I liked what I saw. He tried some things. He did some things differently. Continues to do this, and the team uh, shows some spunk. He might get the job, and I, I would like to see that because I, I like Tommy Holmes. He's a good baseball man. Uh, He's a uh, close confidant of Pete Rose uh, without the personal foibles. I know Russ Nixon, but I, I you know, not intimately, but I know Russ Nixon, I, uh, but I don't know Tommy Helms' coaching style I would, or managing style. I would say they were probably similar. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, they both like to gamble a little bit, and as I said, take yeah. chances. Uh, they're good handlers of players, good communicators. Are they hard? Uh, see, I, I wouldn't picture them as being hard, like a Bobby Knight. Russ Nixon is a hard guy, is a he? tough guy. Okay. Yeah, I like Russ very, very much. Uh, he's a tough guy. He says uh, what he thinks, and he lets the players know uh, right to their face what he thinks. Uh, Tommy is a little more reserved along those lines. Tommy is more of a player's pl uh, manager. Is Marge Shot upset that Pete Rose is gone? No. Okay. Marge Schott is uh, glad the commissioner did the job for him, for her. Hello, Frank. Yeah, good, e good, e good afternoon, or good morning, rather. Yes, sir. we got time for a brief comment. Okay. A very I, brief comment. All right. I think somebody went overboard just a little bit with Pete. Uh, uh, you know, if it had been anybody other than the famous Pete Rose, I think he just smacked him on the back of the hand and said, uh, don't do this again. Was was Pete the scapegoat for all the other players and uh, who no, might I, come later? I think the fact that he was the uh, the great ball player, Pete Rose, uh, Giamatti leaned over backwards. I think if it had been a lesser player, he would have been uh, banished from baseball a lot sooner. I think he gave Pete the benefit of the doubt and the chance to prove himself innocent. Thanks for calling, Frank. Uh, final results on our telephone poll about whether or not you feel Bart Giamatti was too hard on uh, on Pete Rose. Uh, over 2,000 of you called, close to 2,500 of you. 62% say he was too hard. 38% said he was not. We have about 10 seconds. Uh, Hal McCoy, uh, the future of the Reds, a young team, a broken up team, a new manager a year or two before they come back? At least. They're going to they're have to make some trades. They're going to have to uh, move move things around a little bit, uh, but I think uh, they have enough young talent there that they, they can be a good ball club. One of our favorite columnists. Uh, thanks so much, and a great guest. Thank you Thank for you. coming in. Thank you. And you go out and have an absolutely safe weekend. See you again on Monday. This simulcast segment of the Mike Sinto Show was a presentation of 1290 WHIO Radio and Television 7. Join us Monday morning for another exciting guest and conversation. The Mike Sinto Show can be heard weekdays from 9 to 1 on AM 1290 WHIO.